sharp as usual, Tun. Yeah. I must say, sharp as usual. <laughs> Name it. He's he's a, he's a he's the outfitter. <laughs> <laughs> Dream it, believe it, become it. You see it. Uh, <laughs> pretty sharp. Call him Bond, Tundi Bond. <laughs> What, 006, 007 is, is relegated. <laughs> We're at that stage that we're not giving no one a free promotion. Yeah, so it's Tundi Bond's clothing. No well, they got to come look for you, right? Spend Stand the money. <laughs> Shit, the brand continues. Um, Brother, it's good to see you. I mean, I ain't spoke to you for 2019. I think the last time we spoke was just before Secura fight. Security, yeah, yeah, that's right, which is in October. A lot's happened since then. Yes. We some of it was touched on in the press conference. Andy mentioned how frustrated he was. He got over it quite quickly, the whole America thing. For you though, as manager, coach, man behind the scenes, that must have been a difficult period. Well, it's like I always said, and, and it's something, I think when Frank pulled us to the side, you know, I think Anthony was looking at my reaction, you know, and um, from the very beginning, I've had a philosophy that life is polarity. It's positive and negative in every situation. And, uh, it's down to the individual how you look at it. And for me, I assessed the whole year, right on that spot when Frank said we wasn't fighting. And I said, how's the year been? 2018, three fights, three KOs, a global deal with Adidas, which I must continue to bark on about. Because- It's a big thing. It's massive. And I, I don't know why <laughs> it's not all over the place. Well, you do know why. <laughs> well, again, this is where one has to be very careful about how he thinks because you start drifting over to that side of, oh, is this is the reason why it never happened as opposed to let's enjoy the fact that it did happen. You know, you, you, you can find yourself in trouble. So I just want to focus on the positive, the positive where we three fights, three wins, three KOs, a global deal with Adidas, a continued sponsorship uh, with Foot Asylum, Maxi Muscle. This is fantastic. How can 2018 be bad? It wasn't. It was just that, um, for me, if you remember, we wasn't initially on the card. So when Frank gave me the call and said that we're on it, I was like, wow, this is like the icing on top of the icing. And, and so, yeah, the icing on top of the icing didn't happen, but the icing and the cake was absolutely there. And um, yes, I think Anthony himself took a step back, looked at the situation and said, you know what, Unks? Yeah, you're right. Let's go back. I was back in the gym that very night. Me. Because, you know, trainers got to train. <laughs> we know the philosophy out <laughs> And um, it's business as usual. 2019, um, we're looking forward to a fantastic year. Let's talk a little bit about the opponent. Um, Frank touched on the fact that, you know, he's got a bit of experience under his belt. He's long in the tooth. Um, he threw the fact that if he yard was to get a KO that would look good you know I love the way I love the way Frank does that um, just let's talk about the opponent for a minute and just the choice of opponent and the challenge you you expect him to present yes well let me tell you something where, where my philosophy in boxing has always been knockout I ain't looking about no points as we say where I come from cancel there's no points it's KO I've always had that mentality and I feel as Anthony touched on that this is what the people want. We don't want to watch points. Because, <laughs> you know, in the hood, if the man's them are watching, sorry for my language, <laughs> if we're watching boxing and it's a points contest, you know, in the barber shops, in the food shops, they'll be saying, that boy was rubbish. So the mindset has always have to be KO for the fans. The fans want to see a knockout at the end of the night. And I've always had that mindset and thankfully for me uh, Anthony has got the exact my, my exact same mindset he doesn't he may not vocally say it but you know one of us has got to be the mouthpiece. Well I guess that's what you're there for you yes. know what I mean he doesn't need to present himself yes. like that and uh, there's a certain perception that comes exactly. with fighters that talk in that way. Um, 2019, what is the ambition this year? What is the focus from a manager's point of view? Yes the focus is always to win there can be no other focus. Win, win, win. Absolutely. You know, um, the thought of losing doesn't even come into my head. I just, uh, I just can't see it. You I'm know? more talking about titles. Titles. We're gonna win them as well. <laughs> this year, this year is that is that is that 
Is that what we're looking at this year? Well, again, I'm not Mr. Meg. I didn't know we was going to get a global deal with Adidas in 2018. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> I just know that I've got big ambitions in the sport of boxing. Anthony Yard is exactly the same. We want to be, and he said, touching it today, not only become world champion, unify all the belts and become a pay-per-view star. That is the goal. That's what's going to happen. I cannot tell you, stand here and uh, tell you when that is going to be. Right now, the belts are very fragmented. There are four champions, four belts. Four targets. Four targets. So it's not as though we're focused on one person. And uh, again, Frank said that we're number one again. I think we were number one and we went to number two and now it seems that we're number one. I, even that I don't pay attention to. Neither does Anthony. The thing is we're on a journey. And as long as we are better this year than we were last year, if this is the year that presents itself as the year that we do our famous handshake, <laughs> hug, and shout out lands in the camp because we won that world title, then that's what it's going to be. Let's clear up some other stuff. Saw Eddie chatting. Eddie talks a lot, we know. He loves the camera, innit? He loves the limelight. And I think what he does works, just for the record. But in terms of um, this whole British yes. saga, yes. let's clear that up. Yes. Was a phone call made? No. <laughs> this is what I'm trying to say. This is what, see, the reason why I stay close to my, to my, my roots and my background, because most people do not understand how boxing works in the hood. Or let's not use that word. I don't really like that word. In the neighbourhood. Our neighbourhood, bro. In the, in the neighbourhood, in the inner cities. Because, uh, you know, in London in particular, they don't really understand. They just hear somebody highly influential, uh, rightly so at the moment, uh, saying that we're ducking and dodging. For the record, Anthony Yard and Tunde Ajayi ain't ducking and dodging no one. No offer was made to me. I keep saying this. You know my email address, tunde at staminafasil.com, email me, I'm the manager. But he said, and I'm not quoting him, I'm just going to paraphrase, along the lines of, he knows Yard was ordered to fight, but he knows a phone call was put in. Who? Who said that? I, I, I believe, if, if I've got this right camera, man, I don't know if you've seen the interview, but he said, um, something along the lines of, he, he knows Yard was meant to be ordered to fight Barachi, Watsi for the British, um, but he knows that a phone call got made to say, don't put Yard forward. I just saw the interview the other day, so I can't quote it. Let me give you the facts again. <laughs> Let me give you the facts again. Now, a few months back, Jose Burton was mandate, mandated to fight Anthony Yard. I made a managerial position. We don't want to fight him. We want to fight the man who knocked him out. Frank Bugaloni. He asked for the fight. We didn't want to really go off our course, but since he was persistent of asking for the fight, we asked for the fight. Mr. Hearn publicly said, we're ducking, we're dodging, Jose Burton. Okay, you can say what you want to say. Okay, so the fight never happened. The Frank Bogolone fight never happened. Now, a few months, of less than a month ago, Callum Johnson was mandated to fight Joshua Boazzi. Now, if we're going to rewind the tape, what happened to that fight? So who ducked that fight? You're going to try to fool the public about Callum Johnson was, has got a better offer and a bigger fight. Hold on. You're talking about the same man that ducked us, that refused to fight us, Sean Monaghan. So you heard that. You made that fight, Sean Monaghan, to escape your fighter fighting Callum Johnson. So you see, because you got a certain amount of viewers, the real man... That's why I like coming, that's what, hold on. Didn't I call you last night and tell you I'm coming to you? You did, you did come to me, you did. I told you this because I want the real guys, the guys who may not even have Sky TV to know the honest truth. Anthony Yard, Tunde Jai, we're not ducking no one. But what I'm saying is that it can't be one rule for one and, another, and one rule for another. What happened to that fight, Johnson? You saying that it's hard to fight, it's hard to find actually a fight. Hold on, you got Jose Burton there sitting on the couch calling out for a fight every second. He's your man. Make that fight. This is what I'm trying to say. All it is why everybody's upset is because 
you're dealing with a man who understands the game. Whereas Eddie Hearn is used to telling people and dictating their career. You want to go and rush Joshua Boatsy into a fight in us and rush his career. No, sir. That's your business. You ain't rushing my managerial skills with my fighter because me and Andy are more than just a go on, son, we got a fight for you. <laughs> Take that one. <laughs> it ain't going like that. It's going to be meticulous planning. It's going to be strategic and it's going to be the right fight at the right time. So think about it. Who, t who is number one in the WBO then goes back and fight for a British title fight? Would their fighters do it? Would their coaches do it? Would, 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 would Joe Gallagher do that? Would, um, who's, who's, who's Joshua Bates' trainer? I don't even know. Who's his trainer? Would he do that? No, you wouldn't. So stop trying to make us look like we're the bad guys when you know, even from a business standpoint, you don't go backwards. Colonel Alvarez does not leave his lofty position as a world champion and fight for the Mexican title. It don't make no sense. So please, <laughs> Mr. Hearn, you're a son of a chartered accountant. I'm a son of a chartered accountant, in case you didn't know. Samuel Alatubasun Ajayi. Speak it. ACCA, SEMA qualified chartered accountant. Me, his son. So me and you are on the same wavelength. We know, it's just that you've been in the game a little bit more. I don't know that, if you've been in the game a little bit more, because I study boxing. And I think I'm older than you if I'm not, if I'm correct. And, uh, but it's nothing to do with the age. He's on a, a big platform and I respect everything that he's done and he's doing for his fighters. But don't try and make me out to be a bad guy because you're not dealing with one of those guys who can't speak for themselves. We can speak for ourselves, we can represent ourselves and we talk the truth. There's nothing that we've said that has been untrue. We never got no offer and I keep telling it, Mr. Hearn, email me, phone me. I'm from the road, 07814. Didn't he email you on camera once? Listen. Listen, I give my email, I give my phone number. 07814 834 461. <laughs> I ain't hiding that. <laughs> I don't know if you should have done that. <laughs> I don't know if you should. I'm going to delete that. Nah, I don't mean delete it. <laughs> Listen, we ain't hiding that. Listen, I'm telling you, anybody can phone me. Because guess what? I'm in control. I would just delete it, press reject. Or don't answer the text. I ain't worried. Listen, we we'll buy another phone. But that's my phone number. <laughs> Give me a call. <laughs> right, listen. I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap this up. I don't like to keep you too long. I know there's a lot of people want to speak to you. Um, you watched Badu Jack fight the other day? Yeah, Badu. Brad Brown looked like a killer, didn't he? But let's talk about Badu Jack. Should that fight have been stopped? There's a few opinions in my camp that some people think it should have been stopped. Some people think he should have had the right to fight on. He did, obviously. What was your thoughts on the fight? That injury and the rest of the division? Well, um, I'm happy that both combatants came out healthy and well. Uh, Badu is a very nice, humble human being, a very humble guy, wish him all the best, all the success. And that was a bad cut, you know, uh, but I think the fight was slipping away from him, if, I, if I'm honest. You know, uh, I don't think uh, Badu really did what he was supposed to do in terms of take. He was letting he was letting Marcus uh, run away with the fight. You know, I personally would have just gone in there and just it's a it's a swingers, singers because uh, if you let a boxer just sit back and box, you're not gonna get any results. And I feel that's what Badu done. But um, he he you know Badu he's not young, but um, he's old enough to readjust. Hopefully the the the, the, the wound will um, heal up. You know, because that was a nasty cut. That was a nasty cut. But I can't see if that cut really would have had any effect on the fight. I'm just being honest. Um, the question is, did Marcus Brown look like a killer? Not to me. <laughs> I'm a boxing man. <laughs> Nothing to worry about. It. Say no more. Say no more. <laughs> all right, listen, we could continue all day long. We're going to talk about the COVID thing another time. All right? But I'm sure you've got plenty to say on that. Um, I expect to win from Anthony for his next fight, February 23, the same day as the Eubank fight, right? Again, a clash. Uh, listen, listen, energy goes where energy flows. Uh, it gives the fans options. And that, and that can't be wrong. The, the main fact is that everybody's watching boxing and they have a, a choice where they can watch 
their favourite fighter in the girl Eubanks or their favourite fighter in Anthony Yard. My favourite fighter is Anthony Yard, so I know where I'll be watching. <laughs> Say no more. Tunde Ajay, thanks for your time as always, man. Really appreciate it. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. And thank you for the interview.